This is why puppy dogs don't come out in the garage. Oh, I have poison out there. That's where I have to get her food from. She got her little head stuck in there. See, she tried to beat the door. Oh, she's seen her, but she's not moved by her. She doesn't seem to be bothered by her. I mean, she must be a pretty cool dog, but they're not that. Oh my god! Hey, can you this piece of her food? Well, this is his weight, but I mean, it's my big girl too, but. I mean, I don't know if she can eat it. Princess, come here! She can eat me. Go away, both of you! Princess, would you like some food? Here, princess. Princess. Hello. Have some food. Well, that was a snub. Do you mind the water to shed some? Can we take your harness off? Hi, I'm Sandra, and I'm a volunteer for CCRT. Yes, this is my first foster experience. I was looking online um, at thinking of adopting a little chihuahua, but what I found out was that my township wouldn't allow me to adopt a third dog. So then I thought, um, what about fostering one? Mm -hmm. And I was allowed to foster one, so I decided to get involved with CCRT. I have time on my hands um, with my life and I also have time uh, because I, uh, during my work, mm -hmm. I'm not full time. I work part time at home and part time at the office. I've seen so many dogs that are left in in humane societies teeny tiny almost two by two cubicles and if they get volunteers to come and walk them once in a while they're lucky um, and it broke my heart you know a month even a week is too long for a dog when it's not fair it's not the dog's fault they didn't they didn't ask to be put there not every dog coming into the foster system is going to be an angel um, they're all going to come with issues just like if you're fostering a child they're not going to come in the perfect person, the perfect animal either. It's just, yeah. it's not going to be perfect and there are going to be times when you're going to have a lot of work and there might be times where you're going to come in with a good 
animal, but it's always going to be heartbreak when you have to give that child, that animal, <laughs> sorry, that animal to a family, but you know it's going to go to a good place rather than, you know, be in a cage. I don't know how I'm going to do with that one, deciding who gets and who doesn't get. You're making decisions for, um, for an animal that should you should you make the wrong decision i mean that's an animal's life and then if you make the wrong decision is the animal going to have to come back into care um is the animal going to get hurt i mean that that's a lot of responsibility a lot of it is if you said something isn't right that might make me feel more but how do you put that into words to say to somebody it just doesn't feel right <laughs> i'm i'm sitting here going it's going to be easy to give her away but I'm also going, she's only been here an hour and, you know, 50 minutes. Now, if she stays here another week, another month, I'm not sure how easy that's going to be because the more she stays here, the more she feels like she belongs here. Like giving up one of my own. And I'm not sure how, because it will be my first one, how hard that's going to be. And it might take me a while to then do another foster because I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. I'm going to treat her as if she's my own puppy, but it's going to hurt just like giving away my own puppy. But it's for her best and her benefit that I do that. But hopefully after I do it a few times, it the pain will be less. I'm glad she's finally here. I was getting worried that no dog would come my way, that there were so many available fosters. But I found out very quickly there wasn't a lot of available foster, so I was really glad that she came. Um, I just hope that she stays here a long time, but not really. <laughs> I hope she finds a good home, but I mean, in the meantime, I'll do my best to make sure she stays safe and healthy and I'll take care of her until she finds a home.